Our next guest was the Fed's head of international finance at the onset of the European crisis. Nathan Sheets is the global head of international economics at Citigroup. Nathan, welcome back. Good to be here. So, Thank you. Heading into this week, so much anticipation. We were going to hear from the ECB, the BOE, the Fed. Did it surprise you that Mario Draghi and Ben Bernanke, and we should add Mervyn King, really didn't deliver when it came to those ex expectations? Uh, not, not particularly. I think that the ECB is very much in a position where it's interacting with the various governments and trying to encourage those governments to do as much as possible. And once we see them do a little bit more, then I think the ECB will feel comfortable doing more. Uh, with Ben Bernanke, uh, I think he was very cautious about being uh, forward-leaning about what the Fed was going to do at its June 20 meeting. He didn't want to do anything or say anything that would be perceived as prejudging the outcome of this uh, Well, he's not going meeting. to announce some sort of policy switch in front of Congress ahead of the Fed meeting. I exactly, especially at a time when there are a number of members of the committee that have indicated they'd prefer to just watch and wait. So we've got to just let them have their opportunity to deliberate and sit around the big table and make their decision. Now, it's very much my expectation that the Fed will do more, and on June 20th that they'll announce an extension of their twist operation. Ben Bernanke also said when questioned on Europe that we are prepared to take steps on Europe. Uh, what might those steps be? Would they be more unconventional than what we've heard as the possible options so far? I think, the, I think that the first step is just to buy some more time. And they do that by extending their twist operation. Then if the situation in Europe were to deteriorate further, then I think you'd see them move into full-blown kind of QE. Beyond that, uh, it, 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 it's, it's much more difficult for the Fed. But I think the next round of tools are the kinds of things that Charlie Evans has talked about, and maybe even something like a nominal GDP targeting regime. But that's still quite a ways down the road. Those are the kinds of things that might happen if you're seeing a full-blown kind of financial meltdown in Europe, which fortunately we're still a ways away from. I'm hopeful the European authorities will be able to act before we get there. Well, back here, how much pressure is Bernanke under to really focus his attention on the unemployment rate, given that it's an election year? I think that uh, the, the Fed is very focused on the unemployment rate, but it's because the unemployment rate is one of the two legs of the dual mandate. So I think the Bernanke is focused on unemployment, unemployment, but I think he would be focused even if it weren't an election. Well, is it going to be some sort of coordinated global policy easing? Is the Fed going to trigger it and then we see ECB, BOJ, BOE? I think that there is a reasonable possibility that we're going to see something maybe even, even explicitly coordinated where central banks make a, a, a statement together that they are trying to move to support global activity. Well, they sort We've, of did that in the conference call this week. That's, that's right. We're seeing this, this, this global softening and it's appropriate for the central banks to act in a coordinated fashion to try to address that. So we could see that, uh, but in addition, it could just be a string of of, of rate cuts that we see over the next uh, couple of weeks. But the central banks will be in the game. What form would that take? Would it come on a Sunday night? Would it come in the middle of the week? Would it come during U.S. trading hours, Asian trading hours, European trading hours? Probably the, the from, the, from the Fed standpoint, the most natural time would be for it to come around the time that the Fed's making its uh, rate announcement on June 20th. But to the extent that it was an intermeeting move, it would be all the more powerful. And I think how they respond and what they do will very much depend on how the markets perform. Well, what why will be all the more powerful? Because it'll just get the markets geared up with more information? They that, love coordination, right? That, they, they love coordination and anything that the central banks do that's unusual, that's out of the ordinary, tends to come with an exclamation point. So if the Fed were to move intermeeting or there were some kind of special announcement, uh, it would catch the attention of the markets and people would say the central banks are serious about addressing But couldn't an exclamation point cause some level of panic or uncertainty and cause those in the market to say, you know what, things seem too aggressive, let me pull out? Because as soon as investors pull out, that's always bad news for the market. There, there is always that risk that the central banks might be perceived as overreacting. So they would need to be calibrating their policies to the situation. But frankly, I think we're in a place where markets are, are, are unsettled. People are very worried about the risks uh, in Europe. And I'm not too concerned that uh, a central bank intervention at this stage would be perceived as being too much. 
Nathan, I'd like to ask you a question about the banking system here, because yesterday in his testimony, Ben Bernanke said, quote unquote, the situation in Europe poses significant risks to the U.S. financial system. Now, Sarah uh, quite accurately describes your former job at the Fed as Mr. Swap Lines. You understand the stresses in the international financial system as well as anyone. What's he talking about? If you ask any of the big bank CEOs here in New York City or, frankly, elsewhere, say right. in San Francisco, they'll tell you that they've reduced their risk uh, in Europe to a very manageable and very modest level. Right. This, this, is, this is a very difficult issue. So on the one hand, the stresses, the vulnerabilities of the financial institutions that we can see and we can measure have been reduced and are limited. And the Fed just put these large institutions through a very rigorous stress test. And these institutions generally pass that stress test. But the, the, the worry is that there are a whole range of unknown unknowns out there. So when Scarlett's Lehman Scarlett's favorite expression. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Donald when, Rumsfeld's favorite phrase, really. <laughs> when, when, uh, when Lehman failed, who would have guessed that it was the money market mutual funds that would prove to be such a channel of transmission? And if uh, some large institution in Europe fails or there's a, a disruptive uh, departure of Greece, we really don't know what the channels are. I mean, do you and have, do you have any risks. idea where those stresses might show up? I think it would be very specific to what the institutions that were having stress were, or alternatively, how the Greek exit was, was proceeding. But I think there is a risk that if Greece leaves in a disorderly way, that in, in immediately starts putting significant pressure on uh, European financial institutions. And you think these stress tests really are a way to find what the problems can be? There's a no way, sort of a rubber stamp level here. We know not everyone passed, but right. could a stress test really find something in there? I think that what the, the stress tests are really good at is fighting the last war. So they can make sure that the stresses that emerged uh, during 2008 and 2009 are, are guarded against in reducing vulnerabilities. And we've seen that in the money market mutual fund sector. That was a big channel of transmission. And now the money market mutual funds have significantly reduced their exposures to Europe. But we're not sure about what the next round of channels, what is the next war going to look like? And that's very hard to capture in a stress test. Nathan, thank you very much for being here once again. Nathan Sheets, he is the head of internet, global head of international economics at Citigroup.